Give your slides depth and dimension by adding shadows and reflections. Let's start by adding a shadow to some text. To do that, select the text and then click Shadow in the format bar. It's that easy. To customize the shadow in our text, open the Graphic Inspector. Select it and then drag the angle wheel to change the position of the lights casting the shadow. You can use the offset control to make the text appear further away or closer to the shadow. The blur control will make the shadow's edges softer or sharper. And the opacity control changes the shadow's transparency. Adding a reflection to a photo is easy too. Just select the photo and click Reflection. To customize the reflection, drag the slider to make the reflection darker or lighter. With shadows and reflections, your text and images will stand out on the slide, helping you get your point across with style. Slide transitions are video effects that play between your slides to make your presentations more engaging. To start, simply click a slide, then choose Inspector, and open the Slide Inspector. Now select a transition. You can pick from 3D effects, 2D effects, or even effects tailored to the content of the slide. You can see a preview of it in the Slide Inspector. To replay the preview, click on the image in the Slide Inspector again. To change the speed of a transition, you can type in a new number in the Duration box. Some transitions have other parameters you can adjust. For example, the Cube transition lets you select the direction from this pop-up. Most transitions simply switch from one slide to the next. Select Perspective to see an example of a dynamic object transition that independently animates all the objects off of a slide before bringing in the new objects. By default, a transition begins when the presenter clicks to move forward to the next slide. But you can also set a transition to automatically start after a set period of time. Just set how long you want the slide to remain on screen before the transition begins. In the Slide Navigator, small triangles show which slides use transitions. You can always change a transition or its settings at any time. To remove a transition, choose None from the Effects pop-up menu. In Keynote, you can easily give your presentation flair by adding audio and video in just a few steps. To add a soundtrack that will play through your entire presentation, first open the Media Browser by clicking the Media icon in the toolbar. Then click the Audio tab. Here you'll find all of your music from GarageBand and iTunes. You can preview a song by double-clicking it. Once you find the song or playlist you want to use, open the Inspector, click Audio, and then drag the song from the Media Browser to the Audio Well. You can adjust the volume of your soundtrack by moving the slider. You can also have music or a sound effect play only at a certain point in your presentation by attaching it to an individual slide. Simply drag an audio file from the Media Browser directly onto the slide. If you want to play only a snippet of the song, open the QuickTime Inspector and adjust the start and stop points by sliding these bars. You can then preview the snippet by clicking the Play button. Adding a video clip to a slide is just as easy. Just select the Movies tab in the Media Browser, where you can see all of your movies from iMovie, iPhoto, iTunes, and your Movies folder. Preview a movie by double-clicking it. Once you find the movie you want, just drag it to your slide. To add a finishing touch, you can add a border around the movie. With your movie selected, click on the Stroke pop-up menu in the format bar, and then choose a frame for your video. 
By default, the movie will start when the slide opens. To manually control the playback, click the QuickTime Inspector button and check the box for Start Movie on Click. Now, while you're giving your presentation, you can start your movie when the timing is right. Pages work seamlessly with third-party applications, such as EndNote X2 or MathType 6, which makes adding beautifully formatted citations and equations quick and easy. This document includes a quote, and we want to add a citation with a corresponding bibliography entry to indicate where the quote came from. To do that, just place your cursor after the quote, and then choose Insert, EndNote Citation. Next, search your EndNote library for the reference. Select it from the list of results and then click Insert. The citation appears in your document and the complete reference is automatically added to your bibliography. To use a different citation and bibliography style, choose Edit, EndNote Citations, Bibliography Format, and then select a new style. By default, you can choose from annotated, APA 5th, author date, numbered, or show all fields. And you can add other styles by saving them as favorites in EndNote. Adding mathematical equations is just as easy. Just place the insertion point where you want your equation. Then choose Insert Math Type Equation. In the Math Type window, Delete the placeholder equation and start typing in your own. Once you're happy with it, just close the math type window and that's it. If you wish to resize the equation, just select it and then drag the handles surrounding the outline of the equation. Whenever you want to edit your equation, just double click it, make your changes in the math type window, and it's updated in your document. Adding photos to your Pages document is as easy as drag and drop. To add a photo to your document, just click Media to open the Media Browser. Then click Photos. Here you have access to all your photos. Once you find the one you want to use, just drag it to your document and drop it where you want it to appear. If your photo is too big, or you want to focus on only part of it, use the Mask tool to change its crop, composition, or size until you get the look you want. To mask a photo, click the Mask button in the Format bar. To resize the mask, drag the handles until the mask is the size you want. To zoom in on the image, drag the zoom slider to the right. Drag the photo around until the portion you want showing is in the window. When you're done, click this button. The gray portion of the image disappears and you're left with only the part you want to display in your document. Pages comes with a variety of graphic borders. To add one, click the image and open the Graphic Inspector. Choose Picture Frame from the Stroke menu, and then choose a style. Use the Inspector to change the frame's color, width, or scale. If you're using a template, the photos in the document are placeholders, which have special properties. When you drag a photo to a placeholder, the photo is automatically sized for you. You can also drag a new photo to a placeholder over and over without having to delete the old photo first.